We're going to be creating texture maps for things like diffuse maps, specular maps, black and white images, dark and light. We're going to be combining a couple of different textures together. Also, we're going to be obeying the rules that you should follow when you're creating a texture map for a game engine. The first thing is that it should be square. So let's start with that now. Let's come to our crop tool. We want it to be, from original ratio, we want it to be one to one square. Yeah, okay, that'll do there, that's fine there. Hit enter, and we've got a square texture map. Next thing, game engines often require square textures, but also they require the image size ideally to be to the power of two. Now that I being there should be 16 pixels by 16, 32 by 32, 64 by 64, 512 by 512, 1020, and so on and so forth. Let's come to this one. Image size. Now the larger size I can get out of this is going to be 1024. If it was any larger, I might make it 2048 because then I can always get smaller versions of the same texture map simply by halving the size. But for now, 1024 by 1024, bang. That's my basic size. Let's fit that on the screen. Next thing, I want to overlay a texture over the top of this so we can get in something new to work with. So, let's get file open, and from these, I'm going to try this. Rocks. Rocks not seamless. Pull it off to one side, I've got my move tool selected, I can just take this and drag it onto there. Now I could do that, but I think this is the same size. So if I press Shift, and drag. Yeah, it is the same size. It puts it exactly in the same place as the original file. There's no kind of offset like this. I want to desaturate this because I'm interested in black and white textures at the moment. So come to image adjustments, desaturate. And I want to put this into overlay mode so I can get the dark and light from it. It's not looking too bad at the moment, but I'm still getting a lot of the sense of the stones there. So I'm going to come to my filter gallery. Let's see what I can find here. I want to distort it and I'm going to try, well, I could try ocean ripple or I can try glass. That's pulling it about so it doesn't look so much like a load of stones anymore. I'm just getting a load of random wiggly lines, which is what I want. There it is. And I'm going to click on OK for that. Yeah, it doesn't look like one texture has just been slapped down on top of another. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to come to layer, I'm going to flatten my image. So I've just got one particular layer there. I've got to get it so that this tiles. So that if you lay them down next to each other, you'll get a seamless texture. All right, well, let's come to filter, other, offset. Now, can you see what's happening here? I've got these two little sliders just here. Now, if I move them around, you see I'm offsetting the entire image. And you can see these sharp edges here, that's what used to be the edges of the image. And you can see where I'm getting these kind of problem areas. What I don't want is for these to be in the exact middle of my picture. And I'll explain why in a second. I'll have it there. So they're kind of offset from the middle, but I can clearly see the problem areas. So now when it comes to correcting this, well, you're pretty much these days spoiled for choice. Now, the old way I used to do it was come to my clone stamp tool, control, alt, mouse, right mouse button. I'm going to make the hardness around about halfway. And alt, come down here. And OK, that's one edge sorted out. I can also come to here. My healing brush tool. Make it any size I want. Drag it along. And it'll make a good effort of trying to heal the actual area there. Or I can come to my lasso tool. See, I've got this little area here which needs to be sorted out. And I can come to Edit, Fill, and Content Aware. See how that's done. Well, again, that's not bad. It's it's coming along. Now I'm going to come to my filter and I'm just going to go to offset again. With Photoshop, the last filter you used, it'll be stored right at the top of the filter menu. And if you come here, it'll offset by the same amount again. That way, if I'd made the offset so that it was exactly in the middle of the picture, all I'll be doing there will be I'll be taking the edges right into the middle. When I press offset again, I'll be taking them to the edges again. And you wouldn't really be able to tell what you'd done. 
This way, I can keep on pressing Offset or Control plus F as many times as I want. And I'm always going to be able to see the edges, like I've still got a bit of an edge going on here. OK, I'm going to come back to my clone stamp tool. Now, my problem with this particular image, I just picked two images at random. I know from experience that this, say, this particular area here, this slightly blobby area, if you repeat it, that will start to make a pattern there. You don't want patterns in your textures, if at all possible. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to try and break this up a little bit. I'm going to choose from different sources, different areas, so I don't get too much of repeating patterns all over the place. Now, I know from this, if you take a look, I've got a mid gray area, kind of a dark gray area, and a light gray area here. If I press Control F to offset yet again, I know that I'm going to get a kind of a stripe running through. You've got to strike a balance between getting an interesting texture and not too much repetition, like I'm getting a bit of repetition here. Let's break that up a little bit. I'm not making it so bland that there's no real detail there at all. Um, if I was, if I had more time, I'd work on this so that I'd get more kind of spread out areas. So I might put a little bit of patch of this over here just to balance it all out. Get a little bit there just to even things up and to break up that line which is running through and cut into it a little bit here. Put down a few things here. Maybe put down a little bit here. I'm going for an interesting touch with a bit of variety, but not so much that I'm always going to see the same pattern repeating again and again and again. It's a bit of a craft. You have to really see this in a game engine, ultimately, to see what it looks like. Although, there is one thing you can do. Go to my background layer. I'm going to duplicate it. Let's make the call this Samler. Well, I was going for smaller. Let's try smaller again, shall we? Smaller. There we go. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to press Control T to transform and I'm going to bring it down. I'm looking at my figures along the top bar as well. And I'm looking to make this about, here look, 50 and 50. And hit Enter. That's now half the size. If I duplicate it, come to my Move tool and I can drag it up. If I hold down my shift key, I can strain the movement. So it's only going up or down. It carries on going in the direction I started it moving in, either up or down or side to side. I can put that there. Press Control plus C to, to merge the two levels together and duplicate them again. Start dragging that across. Again, hold down shift to constrain the axis I'm moving on. And you can see there, you get an idea of where the repetition points are. I'm starting to get a little line here, which I'm not very happy about. That's the main thing I'm not happy about. So I'll just take those two layers, delete them, Control plus F to offset this yet again into that area here. So I'm going to come to my clone stamp tool again. I'm going to take it and do that. Get rid of a bit of repetition there. And so on and so forth. The last thing you want to do, Control plus L or Control M or whatever you want, and what you want is to try and get as much contrast as possible. Now, as it is, you can see, it's got a good range of values there. I want to make the, the darks a little bit darker, and I'm going to shift this as well. What I'm aiming for is to get a good overall spread of dark and light, because when I take this into a 3D program, I can always reduce the opacity of this. Let's give the 3D program plenty of tones to work with, shall we? All right, there's my file. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time.